In addition to writing my own songs and recording them, I also try to help other people with their recordings. A few months ago, I was approached by an old friend named Bill Slater. Bill Slater has several songs that you can listen to right now on Spotify that are his originals. And he has some songs that he would like to include a saxophone solo. And he asked me if I could help him with one of those songs. So let's do that right now. I'm going to show you the process that I go through to record a saxophone solo for somebody else's song. To get this job done, we're going to need three skills. One is creativity. Another is the ability to play your instrument well. And then number three is the knowledge of how to record. Step one, open a new recording project and import the guide track into your project. Bill's engineer called this a sync track, but I think of a sync track as referring to synchronizing the video, so I prefer to use the term guide track. Bill's guide track is a good demo for me to play along to. His guide track is a full length song. It has the vocals, the tempos, the key changes, the breaks, etc. that Bill wants them to be in his song. He even included a two measure click at the beginning of the song. This is very helpful if the client wants me to start playing at the beginning of a song. The next thing to consider is the tempo. If the tempo is steady, I want to know what that number is, beats per minute, because I will put that into my project, then I can get a click in my headphones while I am recording my part. If the tempo is not steady, then I'll have to record without a click in my headphones. In this case, I didn't know what the tempo was, so I'm using just a simple digital metronome here, and I start tapping in the tempo. Ba 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 ba. Okay, and so I can see that it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to 80 beats per minute. While I was playing and listening to his song and I'm moving the metronome numbers up and down, I found out that it is a steady tempo at 75 beats per minute. As a musician, 75 beats is a little on the slow side for me, so I am going to set my project to click in eighth notes. This will make it easier for me personally to play along with his track. And this is what it's going to sound like in my headphones when I record. When I was a little boy, my mother said to me, Tell you. Another advantage of recording with a steady tempo is that it makes editing a lot easier because you have a visual timing grid to compare to your performance for both MIDI recording and for the audio recording. Some songs, however, really need the freedom to be flexible, so a steady tempo will not be used every time. The next step is the creativity process. So now I'm going to listen to the song over and over again until I get a feel and an idea strikes me for what the saxophone solo might sound like. Okay, so after listening to it one time through, I noticed that there's an obvious hole where there could be a saxophone solo. It's about two-thirds of the way into the song. And I'm also noticing that the rhythm of the tune has this driving... And I'm going to use that feel as a rhythmic idea for my saxophone playing. Here's the section that could be the saxophone solo. There was a break there. I can fill that up with my lead. And I'm still, still playing. Alright, so as a musician, I know to fill in those little gaps 
where the singer is not singing with some saxophone music. Continuing on with the creativity part, I'm thinking in my head of this groove of this and I'm thinking of playing something that sounds rather or maybe something like that. So it's got that subtle triplet feel uh, within the groove. So when figuring out what to play, some people might approach this by just taking the horn and playing something into the microphone right now, but I like to be a little more methodical and work it out in more detail first. So what I'm gonna do is I figure out what to play on my keyboard first. That way I can get some sheet music to it and play along to the sheet music later on. That's my process. I'm not sure if it adds time or saves me time in the long run, but I like the results more, so that's what I do. They send me off to a Bible school. Now. They try to teach me a different rule. But. A that I knew. You know, something that fills up those gaps in between. We are now about one hour into the project and I have decided on all the sax lines that I think are good for this song. I recorded my ideas for the sax lines using a keyboard and here's a sample of what it sounds like. I will make an audio mix or bounce of Bill's guide track blended with my MIDI sax track for Bill to listen to. If he likes it, I can proceed with my real saxophone. <laughs> Waiting on Bill's reply. <laughs> Bill is a great communicator and he replied to my mix the very same day he loves it. So For me, the next step is to get the sheet music so that I can read it. And that means I'm going to need a transposed part. So I went ahead and made another instrument track and I copied and pasted. Then I transposed it up uh, a major ninth because that's how far you got to go for the tenor sax. And it uh, looks like that. The saxophone solo is going to look like this. B e flat C. That's a high A right there on the tenor. And then some high G's in there. A lot of blues scale in the. So it's a lot of. So now I'm about an hour and a half, almost two hours into the project. I've got my sheet music ready, I've got my ideas ready. Now I just need to perform it and record it. So the next main step is that I put on my engineer cap and get ready to record. Here's my compression unit over here. I've got it set the way I like it, but just so you know, you want to make sure that the input doesn't go all the way in the red. Uh, you want to have a little bit of compression, but not so much that it sounds forced or squished. Saxophones are pretty loud. They are louder than a singer's voice, not quite as loud as a trumpet, but definitely louder than an acoustic guitar or a violin. I'm setting up the microphone very close to the computer for a very practical reason. I'm going to be looking at the sheet music on the screen and playing it. For the input EQ, I usually attenuate the low frequencies and then leave the rest of it flat. On the recording compression, I prefer a 3 to 1 ratio and I like to put the threshold kind of in the middle because I want the signal to be reduced but I don't want it to sound like it's being reduced. Okay, so we're about two and a half hours into the project 
And now it's time for me to put on the musician cap and to play the song that I've written in the computer. I like to set up my microphone for saxophone this way. I like the top of the microphone at the top key of the saxophone. And then I want it pointing down at my left hand. So it's a little bit in between the top vent and the bell of the instrument. I don't want it to point right into the bell and it makes this triangle between the bottom of the bell, top, top. That's my favorite setting. Okay, so after practicing and playing it through for just over a half an hour, I'm ready to select the parts that I like the most and throw the rest of it away, and that'll be it. Okay, so here is the saxophone track right here. See those thicker blobs? That's my saxophone. Okay, so what you didn't watch was about a half hour of editing. <laughs> so now we're roughly four hours into the project and I'm done, but I'm going to show you just a synopsis here. This is saxophone 6-02. That was one of the takes. Uh, there's t take three right here. There's take two right here. So what I did was I just took the parts that I liked the most from these various takes. Uh, there's a take one that I kept part of that as well. Anyway, I did six different takes and then I just went through for the last half hour and, and chose which ones I liked the most. And there you go. That's how you do it. That was the saxophone track that you're going to hear on Bill's song. That wraps up this session. Thank you for watching. See you next time.